Today, Mrs. Boyd Live has a special guest. It's my son, Dalton, a senior at Yale. And one of the things he has done his entire high school and college career is debated. He's the best person to Number teach. Number one, let's talk about how you can best connect with your audience. I would argue this is the most important part of public speaking because if your audience is connecting with you, then they want to hear what you have to say really no matter what it is. So you could be talking nonsense and they're probably still gonna be engaged and entertained. So how can we best connect with our audience? First thing, eye contact. If you have a lot of people in your audience, then you wanna go from person to person, but make sure you're making eye contact with different people to pull them in and draw them into what you have to say. I've also found it personally helpful because someone's eyes will tell you a lot about how they feel about what you're saying. And so if I'm looking at someone and it looks like they're confused, I know I need to do a better job of explaining what I have to say. Or if they look like they're really into it, I might want to continue that line a little longer because I can tell that my audience enjoys what I'm saying. So not only does it help pull the audience in, but it's gonna give you some ability to use in-time feedback to figure out whether what you're saying is connecting and making sense to your audience. Second thing you wanna do is talk at your audience's level. This is one of the toughest things for me. You have to know your crowd. Figure out what types of things they care about, what type of language they're going to understand best, and use it. You can also use people's eyes to figure out if this type of thing is working. One thing I found most helpful for connecting with any audience, no matter what the content of my speech, is using relatable moral stories as a framework for everything else I'm going to talk about. So when I'm giving some type of argumentative speech, maybe it's about a complicated political issue that most of my audience doesn't care about, and to be honest, I probably don't either, and I need a way to make them connect with what I'm saying, it's helpful to use a moral story, maybe that teaches us that things are not always what they seem at first glance. And I can use that moral story to make the more complicated issues I'm gonna talk about later make more sense because you remember the story I told earlier. You can connect with it and it makes sense to you because it sounds like a real experience. And you can use that type of experience to make whatever argument you're making later. So maybe I'm making an argument about how a certain world leader is demonized by the media and they don't understand all of the good that the world leader is actually doing. I can hearken back to the moral story and say, remember earlier how we learned about how things aren't always as they seem, right? My audience is gonna connect with what I've said because I've reasoned with them on their level earlier and it's gonna make this more complicated or complex issue make more sense once I get into my speech. So these types of devices can be really helpful. They also can be helpful to make your audience like you in general tell a joke or a story that's going to connect with them and they're more likely to like the things you say later on. Number two, these are some common pitfalls that I've noticed in people and that I've dealt with myself. The first one is you don't want to ask people you want to tell them. This is something that I used to do a lot and Mrs. Boyd made sure that it did not happen. What happens oftentimes when we're talking and we're uncomfortable with what we have to say we almost ask as a question whether or not we're right. And it doesn't sound good, and it doesn't make your audience feel like you're confident in what you're saying. It's really important, important to make sure that you're using sentences that end with your intonation going down, not up, because then it doesn't sound like you're uncomfortable or unconfident in what you're saying. Second thing you wanna do is remove filler words. Hopefully you haven't heard me say um or like quite a lot in the speech. I'm comfortable with being silent when I'm waiting to say what I want to say next because it gives me a chance to think about what I'm going to talk about without filling the empty space with words that make it sound like I'm unprepared or don't know what I'm doing. You also want to avoid laughing at your own jokes. I do this a lot. I think I'm hilarious and my audience oftentimes disagrees, but you don't want to start laughing because you think you're funny 
You want to give your audience a chance to laugh, and even if they are, make sure you don't laugh with them. You have things to do. You have a speech to give. Stay focused. My biggest pet peeve for in-class presentations in particular is when people end them with, so, yeah, and then walk off. It's the worst way to end your presentation. It leaves a bad taste in your audience's mind. End on a strong note. Summarize what you've talked about. Deliver a one-liner that packs a punch. Practice it beforehand so you know what it's going to be. But do not end with so yeah. It makes it sound like you weren't sure when you were going to end. You weren't really sure what you were talking about. And it just is not a good look at all. Number three, practice, practice, practice. If you have to give a presentation and you're worried about it, the number one reason people make these common pitfalls is because they're not confident or they're not prepared. Practice is going to give you both of those things. Practice in front of your family or friends you feel comfortable with right now. Maybe that means over Zoom or Skype. But make sure you have a chance to run through your presentation before you're giving it to your class or before the final time you're going to do it. It means you're going to be more polished, you're going to know what things land best, and you're going to avoid doing things over here that really mean you're confused and thinking about what it is that you want to do next. It's also going to build up your confidence so you sound better when you are talking. Practicing speeches in general also is going to help you with your next speech or the next time you have to speak in public in general because you're going to be more comfortable handling an audience and talking out loud and moving through the motions that make your speech really effective. If you want a challenge at home, one thing I would say could work really well is if you go back to the argument of essay video, you watch it, get some tips, and start to write your own argument. But then, instead of just leaving it as an essay, I want to challenge you to give it as a public speech. Maybe share it with your classroom or your family. See if you can use some of these tips we talked about as well as tips we talked about there together to form a really impressive speech that you can be proud of. Thanks.